Roswell Flight Test Crew here at Interdrone 2018. We're about to go listen to a talk given by our friend Dr. Gregory Kretzinger about how he helped wrangle the drone data from the big fires in Northern California. Hopefully he can share some lessons learned so others can do it better in the future. Let's go find out. All right. I'm going to do you the honor of cutting this short and, and cutting to the main point. So the main point is that emergencies require well-coordinated data funnels from the drone pilots to the drone data analysts, which should yet to exist, to the coordinating agencies. And that looks basically like every drone talk you've ever seen, which is capture, process, visualize, inform, and you can add in your, whatever your spin is to that. So let me just tell you a little bit about me. Um, so I am an ecologist by training. I was a professor. Um, I am comfortable enough with my sexuality that I can drive an orange Land Rover in Kenya. Um, but I think like a biologist, I think like a, a, a scientist as well. Um, and so I went on to uh, drop out of academia to join the drone industry. I want to be in the heart, the center of Silicon Valley, um, the drone industry, and be at the forefront. Um, and so I gave up a tenure track job at a great university and my graduate students, and I joined the drone industry. And since then, I have been through the meat grinder, like many of you have been of the drone industry. Um, and so I've been around. I'm a veteran. I've been around. Uh, and so I formed a company, Scholar Farms, and so what we do, we grow your brain and we do online trainings, mostly in plant mapping. I have the best plant mapping class online in the world for multiple sensors, but I'm not going to talk about that. If you want to learn about plant mapping, talk to me. That's what we do. What I want to talk about is my involvement in public agencies. So this is the Alameda County UAV team. They're one of the most active UAV teams in the country, and they call me when they want a nerd to come along with them and help them on the data side. Amazing pilots, well-coordinated effort, um, and, and just really kind of heroes within the industry, um, and I'm the nerd that they bring along uh, when it really counts. So I got first involved with the agency um, when they called to assist on the car fire. This was a tragedy that happened. Um, a, a nightclub burned in Oakland, and there was a, around 30 or so uh, people killed at, at, during this fire. And so they wanted some advice, um, and, and we pointed them to pilots um, to go and fly, help them capture the data. They know how to fly, they know how to use the drones, but it's really on the data side where they needed a little bit of assistance. The Tubbs fire then hit in October of last year, and they called me to come in and assist. This was the fires that hit uh, Sonoma County, specifically Santa Rosa, pretty hard. Uh, they called me in to, to map Journeys Inn. Uh, this was an unfortunately named mobile home park where there was loss of life before they went and wanted to move the trailers. Um, they wanted a, a map um, before they started to go in and, and triage that. From there, we went on to deal with Coffee Park neighborhood. So this was before the residents were allowed back in. Um, these were thousands of homes that went up overnight um, in this neighborhood. And so you can't really see, but there's a center, uh, the park in the center is a, is a playground and all the burned homes that are in there, and a couple of thousand homes. We were capped at 100 feet because of all the manned aircraft in the area. And mapping at 100 feet for hundreds of acres is a huge challenge for those service providers that are out there. So it was during this time that I thought, okay, this is gonna take a lot of mapping time and a lot of processing time. How can we rapidly visualize this? And so I pulled up the Hangar app for DJI drones. Usually I use this just for uh, my Instagram feed or my social media, but the first Hangar 360 that I pulled up uh, was this photo. And you can pan around in 360 degree images and see the neighborhood. And it really instilled to me that I, Using 360 degree panels is a very easy, very rapid way to visualize uh, pins on a map that then are interactive. We know how to deal with this data. It's just like Google Street View, it's just 200 feet up or 100 feet up or so. And from there, we were able to spread out to some of the other neighborhoods and start popping pins on maps, rapidly training teams to just do a one button push for a panel that goes from the drone to the phone to the cloud in a very easy, simple, intuitive way. It's not 3D imagery, it's not machine learning or AI, it's just a simple panel that really delivers and is easy to interact with. 
So when the car fire hit in July, then the team was called again to go up to Reading. A thousand homes were burned overnight. Uh, you can see kind of the trajectory of the car fire. This is a, a Cal Fire map here. And then all the red on there were burned homes that were damaged that they manually went through and checked every home and then put them on a map. So we were called in again um, as a team. They called me. There was multiple agencies involved, including Menlo Fire, Cal uh, Alameda County Sheriff. There's a, a whole coordinated effort that went to support the city of Reading during this. And again, I went as just a drone data analyst, kind of the link between the teams on the ground and then the city that wants to coordinate the disaster effort. So I'll just go through it quickly, the process, and then we'll wrap up and we'll go drink beer and we'll talk about this a little bit more if you're interested. So we flew up, some of the team flew up on a, a little plane out of Livermore. Uh, we flew up to Reading, there's a beautiful uh, sunrise over the smoke. And other teams drove up, we, sunk, we uh, got together with the city of Reading as well as Cal Fire to, to set our altitude at 100 or 200 feet, depending where we're at, because of manned aircraft in the area. So, we all know about not flying during wildfires. This is a coordinated effort with public safety teams as the pilots. These are not citizen pilots or private pilots. I do not fly the drones. I just point to people and tell them where to fly the drones. So there we define the scope of the mission. We hit the hardest burned areas. We decided on what data we wanted to collect. Um, and we really divided it up into five different zones, one team per zone for Reading. Um, and then the next day, then we followed by expanding out into greater Shasta County. So the whole county is burned. It's, it's crazy. It's hundreds of square miles up there. We were called in to support Reading. We just wanted to map the hardest hit areas first and then expand out. This is the city of Reading GIS team. They were crucial in coordinating with because we needed to determine what data products do you need and in what format. They're using ESRI products, our GIS. So whatever drone data you connect has to be used by the team in a way that they understand. And so you have to establish that ahead of time. So that's part of that capture uh, method. And there's lots of different types of formats that you can collect. And so we decided on those ahead of time and what neighborhood for which format for which team. Then we have to align the pilots very quickly on their capture methods. These teams, they know how to fly, but it's really, if you're using different fit, these, these law enforcement officers don't really use 360 panos all that time, uh, all that much, but they should because it's a beautiful method. Uh, and so it's me teaching them how to do a one button push. It's very quick, but the same with mapping. You have to coordinate the different apps. If there are people aren't familiar with, you have to onboard very quickly. So from there, we have to do all sorts of other stuff just to get ready to go out in the field, including unlocking the Jones and a TFR, updating all your firmware, creating accounts, unlocking your tablets, um, naming conventions, which is super boring for file naming, but really important, and then contacting customer service for the apps that we're using so that I can call them on Friday at 4 p.m. and say, your stuff's not working, why is this not working, you're really stressing me out, and they'll answer. Esri is great about this. They have a disaster coordinating team um, for using ArcGIS, and they'll support you all the way through as well. So from there, we divided up and we went out to all the different neighborhoods and different zones. Don't do this. What you want to do is you want to go to one zone first, with everybody going to the same place, to everybody getting on the same page. Otherwise, my cell phone's going to go off for like an hour and a half straight, and it's really stressful. So you should all go to the same area get on board and then go out. So learn from the lesson. From there, the neighborhood, the, the damage was actually super variable compared to the Tubbs fire, which looked like a total apocalypse or a war zone. Um, so we had areas that were lightly damaged and the fire hop scotches along. We have neighborhoods like the Keswick neighborhood where every home was lost. And then we had this neighborhood and this was actually where the fire tornado came through. Um, this was where there was some of the, the loss of life. And, and so, as much as I joke, that's kind of my personality, um, but these things are tragic and, and it's, it's actually it's fairly hard to deal with um, when you're on the ground and you're not law enforcement, you're just the data guy. Um, that's the stuff that kind of sticks to the soul long after these sorts of events. So from there, there's process and visualize. So we have a really fancy method. It's a Ziploc bag and Sharpie method. So when you come in, you bring your SD card, you stick it in the Ziploc bag, you write the nomenclature that we train you on. I have a steep roadmap for improving this method. It is whirl packs. You just whirl the thing and you close it. There's a designated Sharpie area. The Sharpie will not run off. And then there's colored stickers. You put your sticker on, and that way I know if the data has been processed or not. It's a steep roadmap, but I think it'll improve all this process tremendously. 
Then you need to decide. You have good internet, you have bad internet. You can assume, depending on what you have, drone to phone to cloud it only works if there is a cloud. If there is no cloud, then you're in trouble and you need to use other methods. So you can assume that there's bad internet, best Western in Reading. Bad internet, guess Wi-Fi, it does not work. And so you're sitting there and you're trying to make it work and you have all these people knocking on your door and it's super stressful. And so you need to decide on what tools are gonna work in what situation, whether it's Puerto Rico or whether it's Houston or whether it's wildfires in California. These things are very reoccurring in terms of the problems. So this is me with my computer still on, trying to go to coffee, letting things finish processing. Um, and so you needed to figure out how are you going to chart stuff, all the simple things within an emergency. And this is all kind of drone op stuff. That's not what I do. I do the data side. So that's the process and then visualize. So we use standard mapping techniques. We do things in 2D, we do things in 3D. Um, we, but it's really about how do you tell the story of a disaster? How do you think about it in terms of you're as a data analyst, you're the journalist on the ground, you're the person telling the story for the people that are impacted and for the world and for the city that has to rebuild this. So you need to think about very intuitive ways to show and visualize those data in ways that make sense to people like before and after shots, for example. The impact there is very tangible. You need to think about what's tangible. I also like to think a lot about video. Survey, they're a great software. They're in the, in the, audio, uh, they're in the, um, the exhibit hall. This is a way to geo-reference video. People already know how to manually fly. You upload the flight log, you upload the video, you have a side-by-side -side of a map and a video, and you press play. It's very intuitive. You should go check out their software. I think it's a very easy way to share data from teams, and you're using video. You already know how to collect that. Go collect it some more. So we're going back to my Orange Land Rover in Kenya. Part of my background as a PhD in it is to tell a story about science. Pool data sets from all over the place and piece them together and tell a very simple story. Usually that's about caterpillars and plants. In this case, it's about emergencies and disaster zones. And so I leverage that background, piecing together pieces from different disciplines as a scientist and just applying that to this situation here. And so that's kind of my advantage here. Um, and that's my back, where my background comes into play. So the final thing is really informing. So that's where the team on the ground, these guys own the data. The city of Reading GIS data. It's not my data, I have all the data to them. They're the ones that decide. It's the city that decides on what to do with all the data. They own the data, it's theirs. And it's how they choose to inform their audience. And so it's really me and Devin Hedemar from the city of GIS, also lost his home, total loss, burnt to the ground, deciding what to visualize, what to make public, um, what to keep for the rebuild. And so we ended up with this. This is a simple 100 pins on a map, and if you click on each one, you get a 360 pano. This is public data. You can go to the Reading GIS website and look at it today. We made it public, and then it got a lot of media attention, which was fine, but really it was getting the data to the people in the neighborhoods who have yet to return home to use in the way that they see fit. Maybe that's knowing that their home is burned down, getting a picture on their neighborhood. That's really ultimately the goal, rapid data collection so the people most impacted really know how to deal with it uh, and how to move on in their life. Okay, so we went from about 48 hours from our first flight in the sky to making, processing all the data and making it go to public. I will say it was an incredible team effort by multiple agencies. You can see like the data nerdy people are over on one side. Um, it's a stark contrast, but it's really us working together hand in hand um, and talking to each other. Um, and this talk was biased for the data. Obviously there's all the emergency COAs and the FAA and all sorts of other stuff that we could have talked about today um, but I want to go back to that central point is that there's been a huge negative image of drones within emergencies and here we show a positive use case in an emergency using simple 360 panoramas on an app and this is the way that we build change within an industry. It's incremental. The wheels of change are slow, especially in emergencies with these agencies. And this was one time, again, that we could just show that drones are a powerful tool, even if we use them simply with 360 degree panoramas. 
So going back to my main point, emergencies require a well-coordinated data funnel from drone pilots to drone data analysts to the coordinating agencies. You have to capture, you have to process, you have to visualize, you have to inform. Without that linchpin of the data analyst in there, then all of your data and your emergency and the work from the pilots is gonna end up in a hard drive and it's gonna be stuck in a drawer somewhere. And we've seen this in the past with other emergencies. So if you are building your drone data program for public agencies, you need to think about training drone data analysts and or establishing positions or building into your bureaucracy of being able to contract in and for the emergency call outs to bring drone data analysts in. The drone and the pilots are amazing, but you really have to connect the pieces to the public agencies involved. And lately, Call out, I will train you on how to do this. I'm building a rapid drone data course in there. But if you are using private companies to train your public agencies, then you should definitely require that they train you on the data side. You should ask for the data side once you've gotten policy and safety and hardware done. It's really all about the data from there on out. Greg and Scott Farms, hopefully you'll buy me a beer. Thank you. <laughs> So that was a great talk, Greg. Thanks for sharing. Thanks, Patrick. Thanks for thanks for coming at the end of the day. <laughs> Absolutely. Wouldn't have missed it. Now, obviously, that was a really brief talk. How can people get more information if they really want to come to a better understanding of how to do this? Yeah, so they can go to scholarfarms.com. That's my company website, slash fire. That's it. And, they, and if they sign up for the newsletter, then they'll get an announcement when we have more trainings and stuff available for learning about rapid response drone data. All right, perfect. Well, Greg, thank you so much. Great talk. Yeah, thanks. I'm, uh, I'm ready to go get some food. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And from Interdrone 2018, this is the Roswell Flight Desk Cruise signing off. <laughs>